or Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, world. Good morning, Atlanta. Good morning, America. Good morning, where you are. My name is Giovanni Gonzalez, and I am excited to start the day with you at the Daily Huddle, where we say the way you start your day gives you the rest of your day, and the way you live each day gives you the rest of your life. Sorel, what time is it? It is exactly now and that's the only time that matters now that i come to think of it i have this distinctive privilege to always introduce america's executive coach a friend a partner a mentor for many years mr sorrel katan and the co-host of the daily huddle good morning good morning giovanni and i have the honor of leading today's conversation, co-hosting with you, the number one transformational leadership coach. And it is my honor to be with you today and my honor to be with every one of you in the studio audience. Uh, the question we're digging into this morning is what more can we do to end inequality and injustice in the world? And uh, where Giovanni and I are not coming to the party today with answers to that question. We're coming inside of the commitment to open an inquiry that actually gets us to look at the question, really look at the question, what more can we do to end injustice and inequality in the world? And it's not the world, world outside of where you are. It's where you're sitting. It could be your family. It could be your company. It could be your enterprise. So while this conversation is designed to honor everything that's happening out there, it's designed to honor the protesters. It's designed to honor the people who are marching. It's designed to honor uh, George Floyd. It's designed to honor Ahmaud Arbery. It's designed to honor the men and women who make a promise to protect the public as police officers. It's designed for all that. And it's designed for you to look. And Giovanni, you know, to have that kind of conversation, there's a certain context for listening and creating that I know you want to create. So. Take us there. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Sorrel. And man, I am just excited for the opportunity to dance with you in this conversation and do it at the Daily Huddle and being with the rest of you here at the live studio. And we'll get a chance to maybe have some questions and answers and comments where we engage in an inquiry, right? To honor the men and the women that you are talking about, right? But to have a conversation that is so personal for some of us and, and for you know, all of us in, in some way, we need to create a context in which, that in, in, in which however we engage in the conversation, it allows us to be in the conversation rather than to react to the conversation. And so the context is, um, it's, a bit, it's, a, it's part of a training that Sorrel and I do when we, do, when we go to a company and we do cultural transformation. And that training is by starting first, by taking away this human emotion called guilt and shame. So we've got to take it away in a way in which when we're having the conversation, we're not getting ourselves in there. If you notice guilt or shame, you know, when you feel shame or when you feel guilt or when you feel like you, it's so, somebody's at fault for something, it creates this kind of energy, it creates this kind of context where people find themselves having to hide, having to defend themselves, having to attack. 
you know, and it's no longer about the conversation. It's just about defending or finding a way to not have that emotion of guilt and shame. So what we're proposing here, and we need your permission to do this, is that you allow yourself to suspend all guilt and or shame from the conversation. We're not guilting anybody or shaming anybody, neither yourself or others you know. We're going to like talk about this far, far, far away country that is dealing with something. And so we're, even though the conversation is about what we're dealing with, we're gonna be referring it as a far, far, far away country, somewhere far, far away. And we're gonna be looking at what they're dealing with in a way in which we can engage in a conversation that can probably make a profound difference from here on and forever. And we're gonna be doing that. Would you, are you okay with that? Raise your hand if you're okay with taking all guilt and shame from the conversation. Thank you, Andrea and Maria and the rest of you who are at the live studio. All right, Sorel, let's, I think we got the context to create the conversation. Go ahead. Yeah, I had a friend of mine who goes, you know, I've got this, you know, like Febreze. It's like we've sprayed something in the air. Guilt and shame, be gone. <laughs> be free to engage in this conversation. And to engage, to start the conversation, we'll go like this. In this far, far away land, the people of the land and the police made an agreement. And the agreement was simply this. You know, we human beings, we're crazy. So instead of protecting ourselves, we're going to give a certain amount of rights to the police to protect us and protect the common good. And in return for a monopoly on force, the police would then take an oath and honor an agreement. And the agreement, we won't say the letter of the agreement now, but I want to point to the intent of the agreement. Uh, it is to protect all of us, to protect the common good, and to always check myself and hold myself accountable for doing so. And when not doing so, to call myself out and call my peers out. That was the agreement that those people made with the police. And those people also found out, oh, wait a minute. It's not a one-way agreement. It's a two-way agreement. I, as a citizen of this faraway land, also make a promise inside the agreement. And that promise is to behave in such a way that empowers police when police is honoring the agreement. And to hold police accountable for honoring the agreement and to hold myself accountable for honoring my end of the agreement. So now, in this faraway land, we're talking about the interaction between police and citizens, right? But if you take it to a macro level, which Gio's gonna take us into, you'll see that in any organization, whether the organization be a family of two, or a company of 60,000, or a country of 350 million, when the agreement is forgotten, what swoops right in is guilt, shame, and blame. And every single commitment to honoring the agreement disappears and everyone gets really busy fixing the symptoms of now the forgotten agreement. So I'm proposing that we, as a nation in this far, far away land, have forgotten the agreement. Giovanni, when the agreement is forgotten, there are so many things that come into play that keeps the status quo the status quo. Things like our behaviors, what drives those behaviors, both at the macro level and at the individual level. 
So Giovanni, take us there. Yes, sir, I'll thank you. And so in this far, far away country, right, land, this uh, individuals who became, created, we became part of a community, they brought all these other agreements that were not part of this agreement that Sorel is talking about. And these other agreements were really unfair and they were very one-sided and it created a very, um, in some way, a lot of chaos and unfairness and in some way one could say if you could put a finger to the sun you would say a system that keeps that unfairness in place in this far 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 away and so all of that right without guilt and shame we're going to call that all of that created a culture and um, <clears throat> in this far far away land there's this culture that keeps all of these things in place now Sorel was pointing to something very powerful, which is, well, if there is a, a, a group of two or a group of 10 or a group of 100 or a group of three, three million people, a culture is created. Well, if I want to alter the future of this far, far away land, I got to alter the culture. But how do you alter a culture? One may ask, right? Well, the answer is way more simple than one would think but the implementation is way more difficult, right? Because culture is really on a simple form, just the way people interact with one another. And how do they interact? How do I look at the interaction? By the way that they talk. You know, people talk all the time. That's what forms culture, people talking, you know? I was born in another far, far away country with a certain set of distinctions about talking and I like the certain kind of food and how do I keep that culture together? Well. By talking to the people around me the same way, right? And you could see it for yourself, and it's certainly in this far, far, far away land. So we need to, in some way, alter something that alters the way people speak. So we need to create a symbol or create a, a structure in which that will alter the way people speak about one another that will alter in a way something that is, is kept in place on a regular basis that begins to educate the individual brain about how to talk to one another. And it's not a structure around common sense. No, it's a structure that actually feeds my brain, feeds the individual brain on how to speak about other people. I hope this is kind of making sense, right? Which is like, oh, if I want to alter culture, I need to alter the way people speak. But I can't just alter the way people speak because people speak the way that they do. Well, what if there is a structure outside of the way I speak that gives me, in some way, gives the individual, gives the department a reminder on the way we speak for a greater cause? And that's the idea we're starting to propose, right? Go ahead, Sorel. Uh, and before I say anything else, Giovanni, Rose Hampton has a burning question. Rose, go ahead. Thanks, Sorel. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I don't know if it's a question, but while you were speaking, Giovanni, something occurred to me, and it just felt like I just wanted to speak it. So as you were talking, what I heard was, and I don't know if everybody who's on this morning is familiar with the landmark programs and the wisdom course, um, but maybe you can help reframe it so that you know everybody is engaged, right? Um, but I was thinking about if we did an autobiography of that far, far away country, and we looked at their life, and we looked for where in the life of that far, far away country did they first encounter there's something wrong here. I'm, uh, uh, I don't belong and I'm on my own. What might that give us towards the crafting of a conversation that would be for change? So I don't know, that just like, that was just like, 
Wow. <laughs> and I had wow. to like, <laughs> I had to like stop Rose, and enjoy that. Rose, thank you for bringing that in, right? So uh, as Gio opened it up, right? Uh, I don't belong here. Something's wrong here always gives rise so in this far far away country right if i'm on the outside looking in what i'm going to see is evidence of the inequality and the injustice if i look from far away i'm above this country looking in i will see all of that and what Gio is pointing to is that there's a structure that keeps all of that in place. And if you go below that structure, you'll find, Rose, as you're pointing to, that there are mental structures in myself and in each of us that keeps the social and economic structures in place. So you are absolutely right about that, Rose. And without this conversation that Giovanni and I are creating and that you're creating, Rose, we are stuck in a place where we're forever dealing with the symptoms of the structures, the symptoms of the culture, but we never address the culture itself. So what Giovanni is pointing to is th there's a logical, while it's not sequential, there's a logical approach to how this stays in place. I have my own mental structures, my own places where I first didn't belong. Something's wrong. And I create structures at the social and economic level to survive. And since it's all about my survival or the survival of a certain group, then inequality and injustice becomes institutionalized. And then we say, in this faraway land, you know, I heard people say, only if they'd get a good education, only if they got off their butts and did something about their lives. But see, in this faraway land, when the agreement itself is absent, the only thing that's left is guilt, shame, and blame. And we get busy addressing the symptoms of the culture and never address the culture. So Giovanni, earlier you pointed to a simple way to remind ourselves of the agreement, right? And what Giovanni and I are offering and proposing is this that we say the agreement out loud and that on this huddle this morning you agree to accept the agreement or not and together we actually call to the world to accept and honor the agreement giovanni shall i create the agreement well there's one thing to add sorrel right right before you create the agreement as you hear the agreement, it, it will just be there for you. Like, oh, well, it was, it's so great. Of course, I'll say yes to that agreement. And what we are proposing as you hear the agreement is that it no, not only we say it at the daily huddle, but we also take it to the mayor and we also take it to the governor and we also take it to as many people who, who are committed to a new culture where every citizen of this far far away country gets the agreement once a year and we devote just like we devote a day for other things we devote a day to remind ourselves of the agreement to remind ourselves for the struggle to the agreement and to recalibrate to reconnect ourselves to reinvent ourselves to align ourselves back to the opportunity of the agreement that's what I wanted to add. Go ahead, Sorrel. Oh, that, that is perfect, Giovanni. And you know what's beautiful about this agreement? It doesn't just apply to creating a culture between police and citizens. It applies to creating a culture between husband and wife, mother and son, father and daughter, 
friends, and business owner and employees. You literally can create culture by creating a set of clear agreements and agreeing to hold each other accountable for honoring the agreement. So there are honorable men and women across the nation and in this faraway land who took this oath and they've forgotten it. Some of them. Here's the oath. On my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I will always uphold my constitution and the agency I serve. Now, you could hear that as the citizens of this faraway land saying that's the oath that our police took. And you can also hear it as the oath that the citizens themselves took, where they say, on my honor, I will never betray the ones I empower to protect us and protect the common good. I will never betray my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and the police accountable for our actions. I will always uphold the Constitution, my community, and the agency I serve. So we are that bold, and Giovanni and I are proposing that we can end injustice and inequality in the world, perhaps simply by remembering the agreement. Yeah. Albert, you had your hand up. Albert, go ahead and go off mute. Sorry, good, uh, good morning, uh, Sorel. Good morning, uh, Giovanni, and good morning, everybody actually took off for this conversation. <laughs> I saw your uh, notes. <laughs> yes, so um, thank you for bringing this conversation for the citizen of far, far away land. But let me uh, start with saying the far, far away land is a land that is uh, seen or revered as a perfect land created by perfect men. Um, it started its constitution by we, the people, to create a better union, dot, 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 dot. Article one, free speech. Everybody has uh, equal, considered equal. However, was that really true? about this far, far away land that it was not created by perfect men. It was created by slave owners and who never intended for, in a, when they said equal rights for, for everybody, there was a group of people that they considered property. So we need to have this real conversation in this far, far away land to reconcile ourselves that we're not perfect. We have to actually work to actually have this new conversation. So when I take an, when the police take an oath regarding the constitution, let's look at article two of the constitution, which talks about the right to bear arms. Now you do see a group of people who can protest with uh, AR, AR-15 and all type of uh, military weapon and the police would not do anything. But yet, you have a child who's 12 years old being shot because he had a, 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 a plastic toy gun in his hand. The conversation is not honest. Until we have that honest conversation that we are not perfect, we were not created by perfect men, and we realize that we are imperfect, but working for perfection, 
we cannot have this honest conversation. Second, the First mm -hmm. Amendment gives the right to everybody to, to uh, free speech. But you see hey, free speech. Oh, wow. You I see free make, speech. I want to make sure everybody else has the opportunity to say something. Yes. So I'll stop, I'll stop there. Thank you. And I acknowledge what you're saying and honor it. And consider this, the conversation you're pointing to isn't possible absent making the agreement and honoring it. That conversation can happen inside the agreement. Sheila, you're next. All right, great. Good morning, everybody. Um, really well done, Gio and uh, Sorrell. Uh, it's a really, so what I want to acknowledge is you're bringing distinction to the conversation. Because that is what uh, I want the world doesn't know that they're searching for is distinctions inside what we're actually dealing with. Um, and I wanted to ask you because, you know, I'm going to do a conversation inside this conversation as well. Uh, my question was, do you not think that there are other things we need to address before people can really hear the conversation you're having? <laughs> Sometimes I have to talk my way through it. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll talk our way through it too. So uh, yeah. they, they, there are mm -hmm. many things to address. And Jill, I'll take a cut at it. And I'd love for you to take a cut at answering the question too. This is an important question. Uh, my tendency as a human being mm -hmm. is to look at what's happening and go, oh my God. <laughs> the sky has fallen, <laughs> right. right? And uh, yes, there's a lot of pain caused by the injustice. There's a lot of pain and it's chronic caused by the inequality. Mm -hmm. I'm not discounting that at all. And I'm now coming back to you with a question, Sheila. Okay. Things you are saying needs to be addressed before we can have this conversation. Look and see if those things aren't yet other symptoms of the social and economic structures that are in place. And what I'm afraid can continue to happen is that as we continue to address the symptoms, whether we're in a faraway land yeah. or here, we get completely distracted with doing the work that needs to be done. I am so right there with you. Here, oh, this is so perfect. And what you're pointing to is, I'll just say this quickly. I won't do justice to it, but you'll get it. When you're sick and you have all the symptoms, we don't want to address the symptoms. We got to get down and get to the source of it. Like what's giving this condition repeatedly. Exactly. Yeah. Thank so you. So that's what I can hear. Yeah. That, Sheila. Yes, you're welcome. I just got that. Yeah. Giovanni. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm mindful that it's already 9.30 and the conversation is so juicy. So what I am proposing, we have two more questions and I'm proposing, Sorrel, Sheila, and the rest of you, we create an occasion where we'll take a whole hour for the opportunity of what's unfolding. Absolutely. And, uh, and I'll be in about that. What I, what the last, I, I guess the last thing I wanted to add before we get the two more questions, right, is that people, the, people inherently communicate the, the way that they do. Mm -hmm. and things happen in their life. Things happen in their life, and then all of a sudden they start communicating differently. What we're proposing is that what could happen in our lifetime is that we create a structure outside of my way of communicating that reminds me and that reminds people of this far, far away land on where to come from when I speak about, mm -hmm. when I speak about protection, when I speak about force, when I speak about taking care of one another. And so there's this oath and it's beautiful and it can be adjusted, it can be shifted, it can be tweaked. 
And what we're proposing is that this oath should have a statue in the middle of downtown of this far, far, far away, as big as we could make it, so that every time I drive, every time I walk, every time this far, far away country makes a movie, we're reminded of the oath that perhaps begins to alter something that has been embedded in me in, and in others for generations and generations. That's what I wanted to add to the conversation. Go ahead, Sorel. Uh, we'll go to Karina. Karina, we've got Maria right after you, so you've got about 30 seconds. Okay, well, <laughs> um, the first thing, <laughs> I just wanna say everything that everyone said uh, was something that I thought about, so thank you. And uh, as Rose brought a distinction, um, there's another one. There's something I'm thinking and not saying. And I think that there is so much of that that's been going on, not to say both sides, but on both sides. And all of a sudden we have this eruption where all of that is coming out and people are saying what they're thinking. Um, I love Giovanni's idea about the sculpture and I would, I would uh, uh -huh. vote for that collaborative to have the hand of, um, of many to be a part of that sculpture, as opposed to just one view to demonstrate whatever it is that this oath is. I think that would be very powerful. And I know a great person that could orchestrate that. I know one too, Karina. <laughs> she owns a studio and she's a blacksmith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the people and it's amazing. <laughs> Different people together with, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, transformation that occurs when you put some just tools in people's hands and you put them side by side and have a task of something to create together. It's very yeah. community. Uh, Yay, Karina. Karina! Thank you for uh, making a request. Yeah, <laughs> I accept your request. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, Maria. Okay, so Sorel, the question is for you. Will you share with us what the collective is? Uh, that's for another conversation, right? And the very short answer to that, Maria, is this. If you look at this faraway land and you stand far enough away, you would be unable to distinguish individuals. If you stand far enough away <clears throat> from this far, far away land, you would not be able to see fancy cars from nice cars or big houses from small houses. You just see this far away land as this one thing with this group of people living in it, intricately connected and interdependent as a collective where one move from one person does impact another and where maybe inside of an agreement like what we've read everything that anyone would ever need is available from that collective another conversation maria but thank you for bringing that up giovanni uh I'd love for our collective last word to be the oath again. Very good, Earl. Thank you. Would you restate what we want the people in the world to do with this? The proposal yes. we're making, and then I'll read the oath to conclude. Yes, thank you, Sorrel. The proposal is that the government institution that is committed to the well-being of the greater good sends this oath on a yearly basis, one time a year, so that people get reminded of the opportunity of the oath, and also that the department that is accountable to enforce this oath, they read it every week. And then also that we have a sculpture or a stone or something in the middle of downtown of this far, far away land, that reminds the world of the opportunity of the oath. Go ahead. And more can we do to end injustice and inequality in the world? 
we propose that on my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I will always uphold the Constitution, my community, and the agency I serve. I accept that agreement. Do you? Yes. Yes. And until tomorrow, my dog accepts the agreement too. <laughs> Till tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Love Bye. you. Bye. Have a bad sculpture. Bye -bye. In front of, Thank in you. Springs in front of the uh, 